I'm Kevin Prince from Oakdale, California. Uh, we are one of the first dairies uh, in the world, I guess, to begin with the Pro Cross adventure. We have been uh, crossbreeding now for about 13 years. Way in the beginning, we didn't know what we were doing, really. We had to get some information from beef cattle and from swine because there simply was nothing to go on with uh, with the dairy industry, with dairy cattle. So we started by using several different breeds uh, in the beginning as our F1, and as those cattle began to milk, uh, we decided that uh, the Swedish Red, the Montbelliard, and the Holstein was a great fit together. These three breeds uh, complement each other well, and that's what we are currently doing today. When we began, I would say the reason we did it is that we were frustrated with our fertility in our cows and also the survivability of our calves. And as we started crossbreeding, we immediately saw these two areas on our farm improve significantly. There was that period of time when we had, uh, you know, a whole herd of Holsteins, which is what we originally had, and then the calf crop was all different colors. And uh, there, there were days that, that it made us a little bit nervous, but seeing the improvement in fertility and calf survival, we, we felt we were onto something, and so we continued to be committed with it. I would say looking over the last uh, 12 to 13 years and the, the hundreds of visitors that have come here to our farm, the number one reason why someone would not crossbreed as we are doing is because of the color of the cow. It has nothing else to do with anything. Uh, it's very difficult for the average person to uh, put a white head on their cow or to make the cow red or to make it a little spotted. And um, you know really at the end of the day that makes no difference to the bottom line as to what the, the color of the cow is. Um, that always kind of shocks people when they, they come here for the first time. They, uh, it's, it's hard to get used to a different color, but uh, you know, here we are 13 years later. It's working well for us. Uh, our fertility is superb. Herd health is superb. Uh, foot and leg, body condition, calf survival. Oh boy. You know the most important thing that we've uh, we've discovered in it is the quality of life. We spend significantly less time taking care of all the cattle. It uh, allows us to do other things. Uh, to me there's no money in taking care of a problem animal, so that's really helped us out quite a bit. So it's going well for us. One of the things that we've uh, seen a huge improvement on in cross with the crossbreeding is uh, calving ease and calf survival. We we pull a lot less calves than what we used to on the pure Holstein and also uh, just less stillborn calves. Uh, I think the Holsteins uh, were well above 10 percent. Didn't matter if we were watching them or not, we had well above 10 percent and then we started getting this F1 calf uh, hitting the ground and uh, we pull less of them and, and maybe two or three percent will die on us at birth. So that's a huge, that's a huge change in just at the calving time. Another area that's uh, really improved, we do a lot of grazing here. And these three breeds together uh, make a much better grazing animal. The body condition is able to maintain itself a lot better and that's especially important on our bred heifers. We can keep them on straight grass a lot longer. And also our cows are uh, able to, our milking cows are able to graze a lot better and maintain that body condition too. So for someone that uh, does a lot of grazing, this is certainly a great option to look at.
One of the things in our crossbreeding experience using these uh, three breeds is that uh, the temperament on our cows has re remained very gentle. Quite often we'll have people come here to visit and when they see the color of the cow, the white head, the red body, whatever it might be, their, their initial reaction is that these cows must be wild and uh, really we've seen just the opposite. I think they're gentler and calmer than the original pure Holstein herd that we had. I'll, uh, I'll stand along the manger like this and quite often, you know, they would rather be curious and lick my hand than to run away. So that part of it's been very nice to work with uh, using these breeds. One of the things, uh, looking back over the 13 years uh, with all the visitors that we've had here, many people will come on the farm to our dairy here very against crossbreeding, very, I don't know, just not interested in it because uh, they hear about this white head and they hear about the red body and the fatter cow and, and so forth. But when they come in the barn here and they start looking at the cattle, they look at the temperament, they look at the udders, the milk production in the cattle, they leave with a different impression. And so my feeling is that someone has to see it to believe it. If you haven't seen it, um, you might want to be careful to keep your comments to yourself because often uh, they will be reversed when you do see it. One of the things uh, with uh, production that we've uh, seen a huge change in is the components in the milk. Right now we'll run uh, nearly a 4% fat with uh, well over a 3.5 protein. Uh, the solids would be about 9.1 to 9.2. So that's, uh, that's increased significantly. I would say as far as the milk volume, we've maintained what we always had. We didn't go above that. But uh, we knew that when we started crossbreeding, uh, our main reason for doing it was not for more milk. We already had the milk. We just uh, we wanted to get health and fertility back in the cattle. What we got on the production side was a lot higher components than what we expected. So that's been treating us very well. Talking about uh, feet and leg on these cows, I select for a steep foot and a straight leg. A few years ago I had a sire analyst from a major uh, AI company on the dairy here to see our crossbreds and he came right out and said that he's, he was looking more for sloped feet on, uh, on the cattle when he's doing his selection process and after walking around the dairy here and looking at what I feel is the foot and leg of choice, uh, I think I was starting to play with his mind. I think, uh, I think he knew what I was talking about. I just don't feel that the slope, that slope foot is going to last on that cow. Oh, that was okay. Yeah, could have done better. One of the things that uh, we've experienced with crossbreeding is that we've been able to really maintain our udder confirmation. You will hear people say that if you become a crossbreeder, you're going to get sloppy udders, deep udders, and uh, poor teat placement and so on. That's not true. What we do know to be true is that no matter whether you are a pure breeder or a crossbreeder, each and every generation must select for the traits that you want and if you want beautiful udders then every generation you select for beautiful udders. 
that's what we've uh, maintained here. At year 13, we have just as good or better of an utter confirmation as any Holstein herd, I feel. Um, no issues with that. Again, it's the importance of using the best bulls within each of the three breeds. Another thing that I'd like to point out is the, the foot and leg that we've experienced on uh, with crossbreeding. At our dairy, I select for uh, a straighter leg, as you see on a cow like this, and then also the steep hoof. You can see in general across the first several cows here uh, what I'm talking about. I do not select for a sickle leg and I do not select for a slope on the on the foot. I think that they need to be straight up and down like this. That's what works better on the concrete as you see here. It's uh, it's worked out well for us. Our uh, As far as uh, upkeep on the hooves, we do go through each cow at dry off just as a maintenance, but other than that, they're uh, they're very trouble-free animals.